What? So I'm at Cinegear a few weeks ago and I get handed this. The Cinelex Skycast C RDM. This is a one universe CRMX transmitter that plugs directly into a USB-C port where it not only gets data, but is also powered by the port. If you haven't seen a transmitter like this before, it's absolutely mind blowing. This isn't the first to do this. There is another on the market that I will also be reviewing soon, but look at the size of this thing. And you know what's even crazier is that it's hardwired, meaning you will get the best data throughput to this device where it then goes into a frequency hopping spread spectrum CRMX signal to all of your lights. Connecting hardwire to your lighting network and nodes is always what you want to strive for, especially if you're doing any fast queuing or effects from a console. And this is the answer to that in an absolutely shocking size. It's as simple as it looks. I open up blackout, I plug this baby in, and voila, green link status. Minimal configuration necessary if you know what this defaults to. If you want to customize it, you go to network settings, ethernet, skycast, and go to the router address or the IP of the device, which is one below what your iPad is. Type that in a browser, and now you can switch this from ArtNet to SACN and whatever universe offset you want to give it. Plus, it allows RDM data to pass through it. Want to link a fixture? It's the same procedure as always. Make sure your lights are unlinked and then short press the sync button. A little blinky blinky and done. I mean, what more is there to say? This is incredible. It's a perfect match with Blackout. I had a chance to use this on a few commercials recently and put it through its paces and I was absolutely impressed. I had one or two notes for Cinelex and was about to do a video and then they fixed it and sent me a revision which literally solved all of my issues I had with it. So to be completely frank, I don't really have anything bad to say about this device. I really have to nitpick here. I think the only thing that is of concern is that because this is powered by the iPad, it's obviously going to drain the iPad battery faster, especially if you have blackout running on it all day. On this particular iPad that I was using, which is a bit old now, it's an iPad Air 4th Gen, which was released back in September 2020 when I got it. So it maybe has a few battery cycles on it. I got to roughly 50% iPad battery in just three to four hours, which was enough for me to be a little bit nervous if I was going to make it to the lunch break where I knew I definitely needed to get my iPad on a fast charge. I'm sure the bigger iPads that have bigger batteries are obviously more manageable and there are tricks that you can do to reduce the drain, such as turning your screen brightness down or since blackout now outputs in the background, you can even sleep your iPad in between adjustments, but you will still use a decent amount of battery and it might not be enough. So you're left juggling this kind of awkward power situation. You can always unplug the SkyCast and charge your iPad into wall power or from a battery pack if you really need to. I did this often on the commercials I was working on. And when we needed to make changes, I would plug this back in, wait for it to start up again, and then be good to go. Because all of my lights held the last look, as long as I wasn't doing any effects, there wasn't really any issue besides the gaffer having to wait a little bit. The startup process does take 12 seconds. So if you're on a set that can't wait for changes to occur, then you need to be thinking about adding a USB-C splitter in the mix. And this is a little bit of an ordeal because A, dongles are finicky, and B, dongles are cumbersome to deal with. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they just stop working randomly and you have to replug them in for them to work again until one day they just die. And you never know when that's gonna be, so you always have to carry backups and be ready to troubleshoot annoying stuff like this on set. Plus, you hate to have to add a dongle to this mix because then that just messes with the whole feng shui of this tiny little setup. You'll probably get one that's good size, but then the ports are maybe too close together. So then you have to get an extension cable to make it work or you'll get a really nice small one, but it doesn't fit well on the iPad or it doesn't work well. The one good thing about having a dongle is that you're probably less prone to damaging the SkyCast. I have to admit that there were times when I set my iPad down with the SkyCast plugged in 
And it just made me a little nervous that someone could bump it and snap it off accidentally. But be careful where you set it down, obviously. It would be amazing if Cinelex built a USB-C power pass-through into the side of this device. That would really step this up to the next level. But again, it's a small complaint for those who are wanting to use this as their main transmitter day in and day out. The only other feature this doesn't have is the linking key. Again, I'm really nitpicking here, but I did want to mention this. This is most popular for the Stardust and setting up a bunch of lights and linking them to different antennas on the Stardust. But the linking key is nice, even for single universe transmitters, in that you don't have to press the actual link button on the transmitter. You can set your lights to that special link key, and when they see the transmitter come online, they will automatically find it and link to it. This is particularly helpful in rigging situations where you may have your whole rigging team set up a bunch of lights and not have your transmitter on site because that's with you and your shoot crew on another location. So they can enter the linking key in all of their lights and walk away knowing that when you bring your transmitter with the shoot crew, they will find each other and automatically link. So you don't have to run around frantically linking everything to be ready to go. So it could be a nice feature to add, but I don't expect the Skycast to really be used on big sets like that because it's really made for a different purpose, which is the small compact sets that owner operators deal with from commercials to short form content or even small features, projects like that. And when you're on set with a whole rigging crew and the works, usually you have a Stardust setup or a lot more data that you also need to hardwire. So you're setting up a whole lighting network and this probably wouldn't be the best choice to use in that type of rig. However, this would be awesome for the splinter unit on a show like that, where a small crew needs to break off and do some insert shots and they need some lights and a transmitter. Despite those few notes, this is an insane deal for a one universe transmitter right now, coming in at only $500 through Macham. For all the lighting programmers out there who maybe think they're too big for this device or are running huge sets with Stardust and Hardwired, pick this and Blackout up as a handy backup. You never know where you could use this. There are just so many situations nowadays where you need to break off small units to do different things and Blackout with this is the perfect match. I guarantee I will always carry this as a backup if I'm not gonna use it as my main transmitter. So what do you think? Is this the new device for you? Write me in the comments below, otherwise I will see you in the next video.